Cancer is a very real, ever-growing threat in the modern world. It is estimated that every other person will be diagnosed with it at some point in their lives. Now, the good news is that due to significant advancements in our understanding of how the body functions, we have many different treatment options that work for a variety of cancers. However, this doesn't come cheap, and not just financially, as cancer treatments are often accompanied by side effects. However, what if I told you that there is new evidence that there is personal action that you can take to help avoid and reduce cancer that is 100% free? Hi folks, my name is Cole, and I have a Master's of Immunology. Today on Investigate, Explore, Discover, we're going to be looking at the safety of dieting with cancer. So hang around with me throughout this whole video to get all of the relevant background information so we can dive into some exciting experimental results. Plus, there's more information for you in the description below. Now, dieting is a vast topic that encompasses many different restrictions on what you can and can't eat. What we're going to focus on today is fasting. Fasting, simply put, is a willful refrainment from eating. And there are many different types of fasting regimes, which include prolonged fasting, intermittent fasting, and fasting-mimicking diets. What we're going to focus on today is this last one. Fasting-mimicking diets allow for people to eat, but at a drastically reduced calorie count. So why would anyone want to fast? Apart from it being practiced by several faiths, there are many practical health benefits that have been identified in animal models throughout the years. These benefits include increased brain activity, anti-aging, and life extension. It's also been found to reduce inflammation and possibly prevent cancer. It is thought that the anti-cancer function is due to the inhibition of anabolic processes, subsequently increasing catabolic processes, through the reduction in blood glucose, IGF-1, and insulin concentration. This, coupled with the observed increase in cytotoxic T-cells, help to ensure that cancers are promptly kept in check in animal models. Speaking of immune cells, our immune system is made up of a vast assortment of immune cells that have many functions. Typically, they circulate via the blood, but they congregate at sites of infection or damage. The tumor microenvironment is a battleground where many of these cells interact, being drawn there by cytokines that the tumor itself can secrete. Now, in the context of cancer, there are only two types of cells that really matter, and they have to do with whether or not they can help clear the cancerous cells. Nobody wants pro-tumorigenic cells, as they actively help the tumor to grow by activating checkpoint blockades to exhaust and suppress anti-tumor cells. This is not ideal, but is useful in other circumstances. These cells include T-regulatory cells, undifferentiated monocytes, monocyte-derived suppressor cells, and M2 macrophages. Anti-tumorigenic cells are the real heroes, as they actively help to destroy cancer cells. Examples include cytotoxic CD8 T cells, natural killer cells, T memory cells, activated dendritic cells, and phagocytic M1 macrophages. What assists these cells in clearing the cancer is some of their ability to phagocytose cancer cells, along with the expression of cytotoxic and inflammatory markers, like granzymes, perforin, interferon gamma, and TNF-alpha. These functional proteins can be increased by the activation of the broad interferon gamma activating gene signature. This causes enhanced production of associated RNA transcripts, which when fully translated, increases cytotoxic cell activation and results in favorable clinical outcomes. Now, if we know so much about how fasting and fasting mimicking diets help clear cancer, why are they not standards of cancer care? In fact, why have they not even been clinically tested? Many clinical trials have been started, but only one phase two study has had its results reported. This unfortunately was prematurely interrupted due to poor patient compliance and a failure to reduce chemotherapy induced adverse events, which I think is stupid, but I'm not the one making the calls here. Speaking of clinical trials, it never hurts to have a bit of a refresher regarding the phases that clinical trials go through. The study that we are focusing on today is a phase one slash two A study, which is only meant to measure the safety of the treatment and the associated immune cell changes present in the study participants. Now, clinical trials progress into larger populations once a treatment is proven safe. From there, the treatment is further tested for its effectiveness against the disease it is meant to target. Now, I want to take a moment and really highlight why the effects of diet on cancer is so important to look at. It's important because cancer is something that will touch everyone's life at some point or another, whether it be yourself, a friend, a lover, or a family member. Now, investigating different forms of therapy increases the chance that people will survive being diagnosed with cancer, and having treatments that are inherently available to everyone will improve life quality and clinical outcomes. Now, if you also think that these are some important reasons to research this topic, go ahead and tap the like button. 
This brings us to the paper that we're focusing on today. This paper is called Fasting Mimicking Diet is Safe and Reshapes Metabolism and Anti-Tumor Immunity in Patients with Cancer by Vernieri et al. from Fondazione RCCS Instituto Nazionale dei Tumori, Milan, Italy. Probably butchered that. But this paper shares the first in-human clinical trial of fasting mimicking diets where the authors characterized what it does to the bodies of people with cancer. Specifically, they investigated the safety, the systemic metabolic changes, and the changes in immune cell populations and regulation. Now, to start their study off, the authors screened 118 prospective cancer patients that were undergoing standard of care anti-tumor therapies. After excluding some for not adhering to their enrollment criteria, the authors were left with 101 patients to test the effects of cyclic fasting mimicking diets. Now, in this study, a fasting mimicking diet is described as a five-day plant-based, calorie-restricted, low-carbohydrate, low-protein diet that allows for consumption of 600 kilocalories on day one and 300 kilocalories on day two through five. An FMD cycle consists of a five-day FMD where blood was taken before and after, followed by 16 to 23 days of refeeding, but this could be increased to 28 days based on anti-tumor treatment. Now, across all patients, there was a total of 440 cycles completed, where around half of the participants went through three to five cycles, but almost a full fifth of them went through eight. Accounting for protocol deviations, this resulted in 92% of the runs being fully compliant in the study. The trial also met its primary endpoint with an incidence of severe grade three or four adverse events of 12.9%, which is significantly lower than the 20% threshold. Now for 99 evaluable patients, the authors recorded the values of multiple factors in the blood throughout all of their FMD cycles. They recorded plasma glucose and insulin levels alongside serum insulin light growth factor one. They found that throughout the study cycles, patients had reduced median concentrations of all of these metabolites. However, for ketones in the urine, levels increased. Notably, these effects were not dependent on the type of tumors people had, the treatment they received, or the tumor stage. In fact, these same results were recorded in healthy volunteers, but not in people just undergoing chemotherapy. In 38 patients, the authors measured the impact of FMD on immune cell populations. They found that fasting mimicking diets significantly decreases immunosuppressive monocytes as a whole particularly decreasing mononuclear and polymorphonuclear myeloid-derived suppressor cells and monocytes that had encountered tumor antigen. To gain some insight on the potential mechanisms explaining the decrease in monocytes, the authors looked at blood chemokines and cytokines associated with cell mobilization and activation. Now, by comparing blood samples before and after FMD in 34 patients, they found a reduction in levels of cytokines that mobilize monocytes out of the bone marrow. When focusing in on a more homogenous cohort within this population, the authors selected a group of 13 patients who had advanced triple negative breast cancer treated with first-line chemotherapy. They compared their observations against others who did not undergo fasting mimicking diets. They noticed that patients undergoing FMD had a reduction in monocytic immunosuppressive cells, specifically MMDSCs and monocytes that had encountered cancer. They also found a decrease in T regulatory cells and an increase in activated anti-cancer cells like cytotoxic T and NK cells. Not everyone who has cancer is specifically undergoing chemotherapy. So the authors also took a closer look at 12 patients just undergoing a fasting mimicking diet. When closely observing the cytotoxic T cells, the authors found an increase in activation markers and a decrease in exhausted cells expressing immune checkpoint markers. Additionally, there was an increase in perceived effector T memory cells and a decrease in T regulatory cells. Put together, this indicates that regardless of the cycle, an FMD increases anti-cancer related cells and decreases immunosuppressive cells. Now to further investigate the effects of fasting mimicking diets on cancer, the authors performed an unplanned interim analysis of 22 patients in the ongoing DIGEST trial. This trial is a window of opportunity study in patients with early stage breast cancer or melanoma undergoing five day FMD followed by surgery. They found that patients in this study also had metabolic profiles similar to what the authors previously found in their own study. To assess the impact of FMD on the tumor microenvironment itself, the authors looked at multiple tissue biopsies. Notably, after fasting mimicking diets, they found an increase in T cells and phagocytosing macrophages. By looking at the cell gene transcripts, the authors were also able to find that there was a profound increase in inflammatory and anti-cancer genes being transcribed. 
the identified genes also positively correlated with favorable cancer prognosis. To assess whether the immune cell population changes were lasting, the authors continued to observe the participants up to a month post-surgery and FMD. They found that FMD produced only a transient increase in cytotoxic T cells, but a lasting increase in anti-cancer-related macrophages, effector memory cells, activated dendritic cells, and NKT cells. They also noticed a lasting decrease in immunosuppressive monocytic cell populations. Now, to quickly summarize everything all together, the authors studied people that had multiple forms of cancer in depth. They found that fasting mimicking diets were generally well tolerated with very few serious adverse effects identified. This diet caused a decrease in anabolic metabolism markers alongside an increase in anti-cancer immune cell populations and gene transcripts. This was coupled with a decrease in immunosuppressive cancer-sustaining cells and factors that recruit them from the bone marrow, ultimately indicating that fasting-mimicking diets are safe, feasible, and inexpensive interventions that modulate systemic metabolism and boost anti-cancer immunity in patients with cancer. Not only do I think that the effects of different diets in the context of cancer is exciting to investigate and learn about, it is also significant in a broader context. This information is significant because well, it's a free treatment option that is very well tolerated by patient populations. Furthermore, it creates an environment in the body that starves cancerous cells of their nutrients and promotes the increase of cell populations that have anti-tumor qualities, suggesting that these patients might have a better clinical outcome. All science is basically a stepping stone for new knowledge, and these steps are driven by questions. And I had a few questions myself after reviewing this information. The most pressing question I can think of is how do the changes seen here relate to cancer clearance? It is great that the treatment is well tolerated, but what will it mean for people? Also, fasting for five days can be difficult for some people. I'm one of them, I like to eat, and have not even done a single day fast. But an important question centers around what is the optimal fast duration, as there are other reports of 19 hour fasts in healthy patients that mimic the cell population remodeling shown here. Furthermore, as a fasting mimicking diet is still consuming food, what changes would a water-only fast cause? Or perhaps intermittent fasting throughout the month? As always, my final question revolves around you. What sort of ideas or questions popped into your head when hearing about this information? I would love to hear about them in the comments section below. Also, let me know if there are any topics that you'd like to hear about in the future. Ultimately, I hope that you learned something. But more importantly, I hope you enjoyed your time doing so. So if you did, give this video a like and subscribe for more in the future. Well, that's everything for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.